treatment. You can't do it. Okay. I'm interested in how the definition of uh, wet mine waste uh, and uh, tailings ponds actually fits into the operative language of the statute. And I'm looking now at page 55 on the proposed rules, which is at 20 G2. Now, I'd like to read this what, what paragraph. Page, wait, what page? 55. 55. want to clarify what parts of this rule are still in or not and That's a fair question. I'm talking to the committee as well as to you uh, it says in the uh, second sentence of that uh, subsection the collection treatment and disposal methods must be designed to ensure that discharges to affected areas must meet water quality standards without requiring treatment as soon as practicable but in no case greater than 30 years, although we're talking about a different number now, post-closure. And then there's this very odd sentence. A wet mine waste unit may be considered for a longer defined period of more than 30 years by the department, provided the department determines it is the most practical alternative for waste management. The permittee must design white main waste units capable of operating without such treatment after that time. Now is this part, is this, is this regulation still on the table or is it not? I believe we took it out. That, that is one of the uh, things that um, Dan has listed as one of our directives is to take out all references to wet mine waste units. Um, this would certainly be one of those. If that's um, the case then what is the 20 years supposed to be marking? Uh, any treatment whatsoever. So what the rules say is, and what the definition of perpetual treatment is at the beginning of the rules, it says uh, there shall be no, it's, the rules say there shall be no perpetual treatment allowed. The definition of perpetual treatment that the department had proposed and that the board had provisionally adopted was perpetual treatment is 30 years. So after 30 years, we consider that perpetual treatment, putting aside the wet mine waste unit for the moment. So the discussion of 20 years, I believe, is a discussion that the committee has, has, has had to say, instead of 30, let's do 20, because there has been a lot of discussion both at the Board of Environmental Protection and in front of the committee that says, we don't think 30 years is the right amount of time. We think that there should be something less. Somebody might have argued that there should be something more. And so what's the correct amount of time beyond which you consider it perpetual treatment? Um, so that's where the number of years comes in. The wet mine waste units was a discussion that happened at the board, and I believe, I believe the consensus of the entire committee is to take it out. And so we would be considering, we would be taking out all, of, all references to wet mine waste unit and all implications of that uh, in the finally adopted rules uh, should, should, the com should the legislature um, direct us to go out and finally adopt these rules. And at what point is there no longer either a wet mine waste unit or a tailings pond? Is it at the time of closure or is it at the 20 years? There can be no perpetual treatment. There, there can be no treatment, active treatment, at all after whatever number of years you all decide. Okay, and so active treatment would be uh, you, you would have to you would have to prevent that stuff from getting into the environment somehow without any chemicals, without any pumping, without any other process whatsoever after 10, 20, 30 years. So can uh, is it contemplated that there will be a tailings pond and or a wet mine waste unit between the time of main clo mine closure and whatever deadline we set, whether it's 10, 15, 20 years. I'm pausing because I want to make sure that the I have the right answer. It is, I think it's possible that there might be the very last of something as they're closing the mine, but 
the time of my enclosure, what I'm struggling with is there's contemporaneous reclamation. So we say reclaim as you go, clean up as you go, close your mine units as you go. But from the last dig of the, of the rock um, to the point when we say this mine is closed um, <coughs> might be earlier than 10 or 20 years. But during the operation of the mine, there will be a tailings pond. It is, it is likely that there would be a tailings pond. That is correct. During the entire time of the operation of the mine. However, it can be, as, it's, as they talk on an on a annual basis, they have to say, this is still an active tailings pond. If it isn't, they have to begin closure on it. That's right. That's the whole purpose for having the annual review of where they stand so they can't have half open tailings pond all over the place. Once one's finished, they need to be closed. It's to their advantage because if we have whether we have 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, it better be closed by that time. Representative Deshane. Thank you, Senator. I think uh, Mr. Butler, when he was up there some time ago, said his understanding was that uh, closure begins when you've closed everything. So if you've got a tailings pond that requires dewatering treatment, stacking up the tailings and stuff like that, you're not closed until that's done. And then once that's done, your closure period goes into post-closure. Is that the department's understanding too? That is, and, and that's what I was trying to make sure that I didn't misspeak on. That's that's exactly okay. it. So that could be 10 years if everything's done. Well, you're not Excuse closed. me, I ain't got to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as you've got a tailings pond, you haven't closed the mine. No, so that's forever. No, there you go. No, 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 no it's wow. active mining. Is it in the, there's a definition of active mining, I believe, in the, in the, yeah. uh, in yeah. the statute that you have to be following. So you can't walk, finish your act of mining and keep your tailings pond open. And, and not only that, but we have provisions in here that says that, you know, to the extent, uh, to the extent possible, you have to close as you go. You have to remediate as you go. You have to reclaim as you go. You have to close as you go. And as long as you're working on that pond and putting in lime or whatever it is, you haven't closed yet, so you're, are you are so you still are you still you know using the pond? If you're not using the pond, or, you can't just say that you know we are we're adding something to it. You know that's that's that that's not the way it, that's not the way regula <laughs> regulatory agencies work in well, general. I, I presume there'll be drains underneath it, correct? That's correct. <laughs> and that water has to get collected somewhere. There, right? there are likely to be collection drains. Yes. Okay. Representative Hanley. Uh, yes, on, on page 74, it says the closure trigger. I think that would answer the question that's being raised. That you, yeah, there you go. There's, a, there's an outline that if you're not active, you have to start closing. Okay. So, I need it. Representative Buckland. Thank you. Right where, where uh, Representative Hanley pointed it out. So it, it looks to me like they're using, I know we're getting rid of this word or term, but mine waste unit, it looks like they're using it to me. To me, it looks like they're using it when really what is meant is a tailings pond. There's a difference between wet mine waste unit and mine waste unit, and it's important not to confuse Oh, excuse those. me. I didn't realize yeah. wet wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Got it. it and, and that is that is a Got critical it. point because, you know, mine waste unit is how we describe the rock pile, the, you know, the tailings, whatever it is, um, as, a, as opposed to a wet mine waste unit, which has a very specific definition. Gotcha. So, so a mine waste unit, um, not all mine waste units are tailings ponds, but all tailings ponds are mine waste units. Is that what you mean? In other words, by def if, it's, if it's a mine waste unit, uh, a tailings pond would be a mine waste okay. unit because you're it's a unit that you're using to manage your manage your waste. Yes. Yep. Yep. Rep okay. Well, re yeah, Representative Martin. All I can say is it's going to be fun on the floor. <laughs> oh my God! Someone and really and ought to sell tickets. Remember, for that. <laughs> And, and, and I would say, I just need some clarity of what we're going out to public hearing for. So what would this committee like to have in there for the public hearing? And I think in retrospect, uh, this clarification may not be accurate, although I think I've confused myself again completely. Uh, I think the testimony was that it's not necessary that I heard from the department. Yes. Okay. 
So is there so. is there an objection? So what's not are we? She's saying, which which page are we on now? Uh, proposal five A is not necessary, and may just confuse things more. Okay. As we go. Is that the consensus of the group? Five A is on page two. And I'm sure between now and then we can get it better defined. Okay. Could we define what consensus means? Oh, wait, is it, does anybody object to it? Let me just say it that way. Does it, is there a majority that want to take it out? So are there a majority that want to take this out? If there are, those that would take it out, raise your hand. I'm talking about 5A. Is there a majority that would like to take it out? Yeah. Raise your hand, please. 5A. 5A. About 5A. Raise your hand so I can see it, please. It's, sailing, it's saying that a, a tailing is not That's a wet mine. Right. right. So there's a majority that want to take it out. Well, I apologize for leading us down that tangent. Hey, <laughs> it's not your fault at all. It's not straightforward at all. No. No, definitely not. Uh, six, uh, if we're okay to move on. Yeah, go on. Uh, Six is what we discussed yesterday. This is the new definition for remediation. Um, we've basically changed the words hazardous waste or materials to contamination or contaminants to have it fit better in with the definitions in the statute and rules. Uh, I believe this definition is something the department is comfortable with. Uh, I think it was added in last time or kept I had, in. I had six that we were okay with the way it was written. Yep. Yes, but just, we had the language the words yeah. to be okay. consistent. <laughs> Um, seven, uh, I've added language, uh, which was something the department requested to make it clear that uh, this department may require this testing or monitoring, but is not re required to require it for every applicant. Uh, I think that was also something that was uh, approved last time. Well, we're saying here that if we do require testing as a baseline characterization. Uh, the, the depart it allows the department to require it, but it does not require the department to require it. So does that mean we don't need, that they may not, may say we don't need? Uh, still, baseline? you got to help me understand why this shouldn't be should, shall. Right. I mean, I, I, I struggle with this. I mean, we're going to do it because the way that if I were on the other side of this, I would be saying they're not going to require it. They like... Uh, Johnny's the Tommy's uh, mining company and they're going to give him permission not to test anything so, so if, if you were I'm sure you recall that the genesis of this discussion was that um, the there were people who wanted the old 1991 rules in effect um, you asked me you know can we just put the laundry list back in I said absolutely but if you're putting the laundry list back in let's just use what was developed in 1991 um, all of and, and I'm still fine with that. If we wanted to just block and copy what what was no, used no, in 1991, I, I think all, I think all we're asking for is um, the word may. Because because there in this are a whole bunch of organics that in most cases in a in a mining site would not need to be tested for. So can we not add shall be tested and uh, based on the applicant's uh, request, the list be pared down. If the applicant okay. can demonstrate there are certain things that do not need to be tested for, so that's a shall there, and if the applicant can come in and say, I don't need the organics, and everybody says, you're right, we don't need those. It, uh, I mean, okay, I mean, this was, this, was an, uh, this was something that five of my staff were concerned with, so I wanted to raise it. I understand, and I understand what, what they're saying. Okay, this is just a suggestion. Again, we're going to hearings, so people can do that. It's putting the word shall in there, and under may, and then somewhere adding in a sentence that says the applicant with good cause can prove that certain things do not need to be tested. This is just saying require testing. It doesn't say what needs to be right, replaced. Right, but it has the word shot may right there. I know, I know. And testing and, and for all of these categories of right. things. And we are talking about things that might make sense in a landfill to test for, but don't necessarily make tense, sense in a, uh, uh, in a mine site. And organics was raised to me over and over again. I would just note, if we're looking at the 91 rules, uh, the, the list in here of the MEGs, MCLs, et cetera, uh, are required, but the, the 91 rule reads before that long list. Uh, in addition, the department and or the commission may require testing, which includes 
uh, the following. So it's not even required that the not testing is done for that long list. I guess my other <coughs> question is, don't we always want a baseline so that we know? I mean, isn't that what we're talking about here? The baseline test tells what's before they start mining, what's in the... Uh, right, but against parameters that you know are going to change based on the type of activity. Um, I. I sent these, I, I sent Dan, uh, your analyst's list out to the staff and said, tell me what your serious concerns were. They, they all came back with the one saying, can't we say shall, that's why I proposed it. If the committee wants to change it back to, uh, uh, can't we say may, uh, that's, that's what's happened. If the committee wants to go back to shall and say and the applicant can prove otherwise, uh, that, that's fine with me. I just. I thought it, you know, I've been trying to work with the staff, you know, who actually know their stuff, and I wanted to bring it forward because um, I'm trying to actually work with the technical people on this one, um, and so that's why. So if you want to change it back, but it, please at least give the latitude so that, um, which is why I believe Senator Saviello suggested, so that um, we don't have to also review a bunch of stuff that's not going to make any difference in the end. <coughs> is, it, is, it, is there any objection to changing the shall and adding a statement in it unless the applicant can prove otherwise? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, I would suggest that. So I, I just had a little further question. It says that this is part of part of the baseline site characterization. So are there other characterizations yeah, that? Oh, it's a, it's a very it's a very comprehensive section. It's a section. You have to look at the whole section. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. pages somewhere so around twenty. You have, do, you have to do water flow. It's starting on page twenty. Water quality. Yeah. Documentation of surface water. Yeah. Five hundred year storms. This is just the one part of that whole yeah. process. So the shall just is makes it specific to these yep. these things here. Drinking water standards. That's <coughs> And that, that without, with the exception of that long delineated list of, of specific things to test right. for, the 91 rules do list out these standards. So all we're doing is suggesting that you could, somebody could require, I went through this once, where they could do pesticides because they raised potatoes there one time, but they could do pesticides, but, but the applicant can say, no, this was a forested area, there's no need doing that. What gives the flexibility to your staff to say, you're yeah, right, we, we don't need that, but we do need these things over here. And then I think it's clear because, again, if I were arguing this, I'd say, shall, you may. That means they may not even have to test. This shall says you do have to. Represent Buckley. Yeah, but, the, but, but the may is, a, I, I'm not going to go against the shall with the caveat, but the word may is at the discretion of the department, and, and so is the new proposed language. That's, except it says you will test it. So if push comes to shove, at the end of the day, I'm the applicant and you're DEP, and you say do it, and I say no, I lose. Because you're DEP. Again, no. Okay, at the end of the day, if you leave shall in there, yeah. and we have an argument over what I'm going to test for, I'm the applicant, you're DEP, you win. Right. Because this says shall. Because then I could, we could argue to a blue in the face. Okay. It says, it says, uh, me, it says, I, may, so I, am out I know, I know, but that's not how it reads. I understand. I understand. Most cases, we all that are in the licensing process take may as shall. I know. Okay, let's keep going. So that's good with those changes. Did you want to? It's good for the hearing process. And for the so hearing. That's yeah. what let's we're trying to do is put this together for the hearing. That's yeah. all let's we're trying see to what do. The testimony we can um, eight, uh, nine, ten were uh, in. Uh, Eleven was slightly ch amended um, with respect to the discussion that was had about um, site access during the hearing process. Uh, so uh, this now reads, uh, Section 10G9 has to be clarified that access to a potential mining site during the application process by any intervener, uh, which would also include citizen interveners, uh, shall be as allowed through an adjudicatory hearing process conducted in accordance with applicable provisions of MAPA. 
um, I believe that was what was discussed yesterday or Monday. Okay, number 12. This is one we did not do at all. Um, 12 was flagged for further discussion. Uh, and I would also note that I spoke with, uh, because this was um, Jeff Reardon's proposal, uh, I spoke with him um, and he, he recommended the following changes to what's in there right now. Um, so uh, it would be, uh, the applicant has demonstrated that after closure, all mining areas and affected areas will be restored to uh, a stable and self-maintaining condition. So define stable and self-maintaining. With hydrology, surface water and groundwater quality, wildlife uh, and fisheries habitat, uh, and other ecological conditions that approximate uh, pre-mining baseline conditions. Uh, so the addition of uh, stable and self-maintaining condition uh, and wildlife and fisheries habitat um, so uh, relatively uh, not not a huge change from uh, as it reads in there now which removed the phrase near natural conditions um, from the previous number 12. And so that's not written you don't have a stable no, I received that after I already yeah. sent it. I, I, that, that would be fine with me in place of near natural, self-maintaining is. Right. Representative Martin. Page uh, four, top. Oh. Okay. Right. Oh, I, I, can, I can go over that. Uh, this is to the section on uh, criteria for approving a permit. So there's a lit. Right. He's suggesting self-maintaining condition what? instead of near natural. You're, read, read, read. 12, what it would look like with the changes yep. that you proposed. Uh, and I guess as background, uh, the draft we looked at last time. Yeah, uh, oh, you, okay, yep. Um, so that the would read, uh, the applicant has demonstrated that after closure, all mining areas and affected areas will be restored to a stable and self-maintaining condition with hydrology, surface water and groundwater quality, wildlife and fisheries habitat and other ecological conditions that approximate pre-mining baseline conditions. Okay. And habitat after wildlife and fisheries. And it, Would that self-maintaining condition be near natural? No, it was uh, <coughs> self-maintaining and near natural previously. And what do we have in the present rules? Nothing. This is not in there. No, but we have something that says it's got to be returned back to its original. Oh, there's a standard in the reclamation section. Right. Does not include self-maintaining. What's the definition of self-maintaining? That's what I'm asking. Self-explanatory? I mean, I just if you want to leave it in for the hearing, I'm fine. Leave it in for the. What do you want? They're going to be in good company. <laughs> so, what would people like to have? I like that. Okay, I think we have. It's self-explanatory. Don't you could explain what it means? Well, it doesn't need any external treatment. It takes big. Self-maintaining. I don't care. I mean, if we go to the hearing with it, but I, between now and the hearing, someone's got to come up to define self-maintaining. Okay, we can sign that. <coughs> Heather, do you want to? pipe in on this? I'm not going to venture a guess as to what self-maintaining is. I do want to flag for the committee that just like for landfills that have been closed, we have perpetual uh, requirements that you maintain the landfill cover to make sure that 
um, it's properly mowed and that tree roots don't grow in and, and, and breach the landfill. Um, we actually have a whole series of maintenance requirements um, after closure in our rules to protect from those types of things. Um, no different than any anything like a landfill. I don't want to have the uh, unintended consequence of preventing that from happening, which I think is a reasonable requirement uh, of a mining operation. So for example, on a landfill, when you have a cover on the top with an HTPE cover and two feet of clay, you don't want trees growing on it. You want to maintain that by cutting the grass. Exactly. And by this definition, you couldn't cut the grass. I, I would, I, that is the way I read that definition. Goats. Yeah, goats. Deer. <laughs> and, and, and goats that's wouldn't prevent the trees from growing. Um, Moose. That's, that's, that's part of the reason game. why perpetually we, we require that um, that a, a, a deed restriction or something similar to that runs with the land that they have to go back and maintain the property so that those basic things happen. And I, I'm afraid that this would be an, an unintended consequence of that this would be preventing that whole maintenance section of our rules to not be able to occur. I agree. I agree. That's why I said define it. I mean, that's what you're talking about. Is so, so is there another word that you could put in there? So this is an addition of verbiage, correct? This would add an additional criterion for permit approval, if that's what you're asking. John, you're writing something? He's thinking. You want to come back to you? Are you? Back to you. All right, come back to you. So let's move on to 13, and, and then we'll come back to see what the good, the good representatives come up with. He gave me that assignment once on something and sent me out of the room when I was a rookie. All right, let's go to uh, 13. 13 I described last time. Um, I just added additional language to clarify that uh, this section is in addition to what's already in the rules. It's not replacing it, um, so that it would not uh, require the de uh, prohibit the department from issuing a mining permit if the applicant has documented violations of land use or environmental laws of another state, um, federal, or a foreign country. Okay. Um, Fourteen unchanged uh, and approved. Fifteen was flagged for further discussion. assurance I mean I, I don't care how they get through it all I want is make sure there's enough money if there's a problem and enough money to close this thing so the state doesn't on the limb that's my goal simple as that so whatever the language is that says that I'm happy with it I thought we agreed with J.D. Kilgris and then we I do not agree with it because it's the insurance is not as readily available as he says it is go ahead representative Duchesne to me the, thank you senator this always comes back to the tailings pond the big exposure of risk always seems to be the sudden climactic or uh, sudden horrible event when a tailings pond fails. Um, if there's going to be a tailings pond, especially if it's going to be there any length of time, it seems like the financial assurance is going to have to be pretty strong up front, either in how much insurance you get to cover the potential disaster or the amount of money you have to put up front. That's going to be big. If the applicant comes in with a proposal that doesn't really involve a tailings pond, if they do dry stacking right away, that number gets a whole lot smaller faster. I'm still, I don't know how the math works where there's a, a point there where it makes more sense just to do the right thing and stack it without a tailings pond uh, than have to put up all this money to pay for insurance and assurance. But at the end of the day, I guess I'm with Senator Saviello that uh, we're not going to pay for it and there's going to have to be something. Um, approved by the department to make sure the risk is on the applicant, not us. Whether it's assurance, insurance, whether they reduce that risk by getting rid of tailings and pavements altogether, um, that's where I want the department to end up. Other comments? So I think what, what I'm hearing is we're going to leave what we have in there presently and we'll see what else we gather at the hearing. Is there any objection to that? Okay. 16. Uh, 16 is unchanged and was approved yep. last time. 17 and 18 were both taken out last time. Uh, 19 was flagged for further discussion. This is about, um, 
I'm not sure the further discussion was intended on on this in particular, but maybe more on um, generally on exclusions and setbacks. Uh, but it could have been on this proposal as well. Yeah, they, and there was some information on what the Constitution says about this. Well, I think it, it goes through what Dan analyzed for us. It's a circular route. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, then you have to get two thirds vote, but that doesn't matter. Well, that's that's. I think the the mining on public lands is separate from the the constitutional issue. Oh. Yeah, it's just saying this was about public lots, right? Isn't that what we're? Oh, that may have been what. Yes. Number nineteen. It just says uh, the con it says state park land. Public lots and other real estate held by the state for conservation or recreation purposes and designated by legislation implementing this section may not be reduced or its use is substantially altered except on the vote of two thirds of all members elected to each house. The proceeds from the sale of each land used to purchase additional real estate in the same county for the same purposes. And I think that was part so, of your analysis, wasn't it? Yeah, my analysis on that issue. Uh, it was basically that there's not really enough guidance in statute and it looks like the intention was um, whether or not mining would constitute a substantial um, reduction or, or reduction or substantial alteration is a legislative determination. Whether or not that constitutional provision comes into play is a legislative determination. So, but this, this provision was more to deal with the issue between the mining on public lands statute uh, in, in its interplay with the, the mining framework statute and the rules. Representative Tucker. Thank you. Can you save the day? No, I can't. <laughs> uh, on page 51 is where this public lands uh, prohibition starts under the citing clause of section 20. And it starts off reading at the bottom of the page there, mining excluded. And then it says, except as allowed under state and federal laws, no mining shall be conducted in or on the following. And then we go through the laundry list. I would propose that we delete the language, except as allowed under state and federal law. But that's where we went through the confusion of the circular route. Right. right. I want to just, just prohibit it, period. No. Representative Shane. Give me one. Oh, it's me. Oh. You two quit fighting. <laughs> so it seems like the danger is if mining is actually allowed under on public land right now, uh, under law, and we put in rule that you can't, we're letting the rule trump the statute. And at the end of the day, the statute will trump the right. rule. I don't, I'm fine with going out to. Can we just leave it? Let the Constitution decide and let people have I just say about it? leave it. Know. My personal opinion leave it and let's see what we get. Did you write something yet? <laughs> and, and, and what does 12 MRS 1801A? A say. That's the definition of public reserve lots. Okay. Representative Shane, go ahead. Just thank you. Just my own opinion. At the end of the day, this is going to need clarification, probably on Title 12 in the ACF committee. Sooner or later, I bet if we're going to do something to ban mining on public lands, it's got to be in statute and it's to their jurisdiction. So I would fully expect somebody ought to put in a bill, um, maybe even as an emergency next year or certainly the following session. Okay, so right now let's just leave it alone. Wait, For clarification. Get in yep. public hearing? Yep. Leave that proposal in. Yep. Okay. Is that uh, any objection? Nope. Okay. Um, 20, the only change I did, and this doesn't have to stay in there, but uh, just for clarity purposes, uh, I added statutory cross references to uh, the definition of the term great pond. That's a uh, reference to the Natural Resources Protection Act uh, and submerged lands of the state, and that's as defined in Title 12. Okay. What did we end up doing with uh, page 52? <coughs> we talked about it. Uh, 4I. We took it out. 
that's what I just want to make sure. Okay. Go ahead, Dan. Where uh, else? 21 uh, was approved for removal. Uh, 22 was kept in. Uh, 22 A, as it is now, uh, came out of the same discussions on the setback topic uh, to provide that the listed setbacks apply to both surface and underground mining activities. Uh, currently, it only applies to surface mining okay. activities. Keep that in. Yep. Uh, 23 and 24 were remo removed last time. Um, 25 through 29 were kept in last time. Uh, 30 and 31 um, are similar to 30 and 31 last time, except for now each of them include um, the language that uh, these monitoring under these two sections uh, shall be required to the extent that is technically feasible. Yep. That's a clarification. So those two are good? Yep. <coughs> Unless, uh, please speak up I'm, I'm, yeah. you, if you're not ready. Uh, no change to 32. 33 was removed. Um, 34 was changed to uh, remove uh, the use of wet mine. I'm, I'm going to confuse everyone if I say it that way. Uh, <laughs> to uh, allow for the use of wet mine waste units during the life of the mine but not after closure. Actually got it right. I wasn't going to previously when I started speaking. <laughs> it's during operations you can use this. It's after operations you cannot. And that's we'll hear about this. That's correct. I don't agree with this, but just for sake of the public hearing. Uh, Thirty-five was changed to uh, provide that perpetual treatment means treatment for more than twenty years post closure. Um, looking at this now, I realize I may need to add a couple more uh, section references where yeah. this would need to be amended in the rules, um, but the language I've been using in this section and in 34 gives the department flexibility to change the rules as necessary to incorporate um, these two more significant changes. Um, Go ahead, keep that's going. good. Um, the, then the rest, the rest of it is unchanged. Senator, Representative Martin, have you got an answer for us yet? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Professor. <laughs> so in essence, where we are now is that we'll take this and put it in the form of a bill. And the form, it pretty much, without the analyst's remarks in it, will be what gets posted. Where will we post this, Dan? Uh, if, it's, if it's good enough for you, I'll have it posted on OPLA's website. Uh, I, I posted a copy of the provisionally adopted mining rules there previously and emailed the listserv out. Um, so I, I will post it there and email a copy out to the interested parties list. Can you put a link somewhere in the ENR pages or site? I, I have tried a bit to talk with the Legislative Information Office about putting it um, somewhere on the actual main legislature website and it's the way it's been created it's very tricky to do that. Um, so the, the simplest thing is going to be to put it on OPLA's website uh, I can check into that again, but uh, they've told us that it's not possible to link it to um, that 750 bill page. Well, I can just send the hyperlink. Well, you could you could put it in as an amendment to the bill. We have to accept it as a no. We, yeah, yes, you'd have to accept it as an amendment because the way that things are added, right. and Tyler might be able to correct me if I'm wrong about this. But you actually, we have a whole logging system for all the amendments, and it would actually have to be logged as a new amendment and then loaded into the system in order for them to upload it to the page, which would require you to vote on it. People already accuse me of doing stuff that I don't do, but if we said that, I understand, I can see it in your eyes. We could approve this as an amendment, then it gets posted, and then we have a hearing on it and trash it. I mean, that's that's an alternative. I don't see any other way to do it. If, if, if people want this on the website, 
we could accept it as an amendment but still have the public hearing on it because we have a process in place to do that and we could change it accordingly but I'm not recommending that no. so I, no. I'm not I would have to check with my office because I'm not sure you can hold a public hearing on it after you voted okay so, uh, hold it. Yeah, right. well, I'm, I'm gonna look at the master hold it I think our plan now is fine we've been talking about it yep. for several weeks I think all the people that's probably true. I, I totally agree. I okay. Okay. I see the gleam in his eyes. I figured I would, but hey, we'll go back to 12 for a moment. Okay, back to 12. No, the professor's been working. Well, the, there are a couple problems with it, and, and that's the question of what you do with the words restored to self-maintaining conditions. And I would simply, to, I mean, basically, you what you want is something that is stable. I mean, how you, you know, otherwise than that, you're going to need a biologist or everyone else to start figuring out what is wildlife, fisheries, and other whatever that meet pre mining baseline conditions. That's 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 not feasible. Wait, and you had the you professor gotta, finish. As a Buckley, you got to. Suggestion. Well, my question was, um, I, I believe it was Heather Parent who mentioned that she wants to be able, the department to be able to uh, require that whoever's closing this thing is also responsible for mowing the grass and not letting trees grow down in and impinge upon the barrier that's keeping it encased. And so there must be some some kind of description of that condition as a as, as a requirement of closure that exists somewhere, maybe like in the, in the solid waste, you know, in the landfill situation. But essentially, we're talking about a maintainable surface or a maintainable What's condition. The language in, 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 uh, that you use in closures of set of landfills. Heather, where? Why don't we just say that? Well, that, is that to say that the that what we're looking at at the in number twelve here is just the general description, and then the specific requirements are listed in that seventy-one to seventy-seven? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is that your? I mean, basically, the performance standard on one A one A says the applicant shall design the closure of east waste mine waste unit to minimize the need for maintenance and to control the release of mine waste and constituents into the air. And it says comply with monitoring. It's all spelled out there. This it's all is there. Just, yep. This so. is a suggestion addition. <clears throat> if somebody, my suggestion is not to add it. No, take out 12 completely because you've Represent, got it in, get there now, right? Represent Duchesne. Oh, okay. It is all right there. And furthermore, when you ban active treatment past a certain point, that only leaves self maintaining because you can't. You can't get a permit if you're going to have to do anything more past that date. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I've never been able to figure out where self-maintaining gets me that banning active treatment past a certain date doesn't also accomplish. But I'm willing to have the discussion the hearing, but I really don't see where it gets us. 12 out, and I, 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 right, I'll ask for... Right, just take self-maintaining out. It doesn't hurt to repeat it. We have everything else. I mean, we put other things in there that we really don't even necessarily agree with, so why not just toss it in there and call it a day? Just, and just we can change the, it after the hearing. Just remove self-maintaining. Yeah, if someone's going to mark that area, you just let it go forever, right? Why not just put oh, it I in? Like, and I then, like the intent of 12. Right, so. and we can take it out later if we don't like it, but why not just put it in and not argue? Take it out now. So the consensus, so I need to have a consensus. Uh, a uh, uh, Those that would like to take it out now, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Leave it in. One, two, three. Yeah. 
three, four, five, four, five. Comes out. Okay. Dan? So I'll, uh, I'll draft up uh, a final draft and I'll send it out to all of you um, tomorrow or Friday to just give you 12 or so hours to review it, make sure that there's nothing that's in your notes that I missed, and then I'll go ahead and send it out to interested parties list and I'll have it posted on the OBLA website. Representative Martin? In terms of, of getting it out to, to people, obviously, I think once we put it out, it's going to, we need to somehow figure out a way so they can have easy access to get it. And so there are some people that do not have internet, so we need to figure out a way that they can write in to get it. I or think if they, we can put on that, could we put on there if they need to call Tyler, that he yeah. can call and, and that we can send him a copy if we have to. I, I, I wouldn't want to say that the Legislative Information Office will be okay with mailing out copies until we talk no, no, with no, them. No, 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 yeah. no. They can call here and we can get or call one of us. Well, I mean, we, we can always email copies. We could send them, but if they don't have internet, yeah, that might be challenging. We could send it to their, their library. I mean, if that came down to it, we could send it to their library. It's not a bad idea. We make it available to the local libraries. Yeah, I mean, we can yeah, just. But that's a lot. But, of but, but, but yeah, I, I would suggest if someone calls that maybe they we can send it to the library we for them. We could put it in our legislative library and they come in. <laughs> okay. We'll figure it out. I can certainly make printed copies available beforehand in the in the committee room. Yeah, that'd be great. Any further discussion on this? Anything for tomorrow? We have uh, the Kids Safe Act tomorrow, and uh, Senator 